Okay, super. Right, so today we want to um, we want to do 2019. That's what we want to do. So yeah, because we're a little bit late, pretty much lost half of our presentation. We're going to be flying through the stuff, pretty much. Um, so yeah. There's our question paper. You guys all have it in front of you. To my guys online, um, you can see right in front of you what we're actually doing. I think we are going to start at the end. Should we start? Let's start at the end. And then we'll come back because I think things like Bank Recon you guys have been exposed to. Theory questions I won't do with you guys. All right, because you guys can just open up your textbook and go through that. So we've got six questions here. So let's start with question six. Okay, so under question six, if we look there, uh, it says, under the required, it says, first thing, complete the table in your answer booklet and calculate the member's percentage interest and founders when Paul Brown joins the CC, okay? Then open post two and balance the appropriation account, okay? 31 July, 2019. All right, so let's scroll up. We see the PVCC was registered 1 August, 2015. The following statement of uh, the closed corporation sets out the following. The nature of the business, a clothing retailer, names of the members and their interests and contributions made on 1 August 2015. So there we have it. Okay. So we can quickly actually copy this information in to the table that we have because we know we are going to need it. Okay. We know that we are definitely going to need it. So just this information right here. So let's do that. Go into my suggested answers, which we'll be using to get us through this paper. Okay, all right. So I've already put in that first line. Okay, so 60, four join joins calculations. Okay, cool. So let's go back. So I have already done that. Okay, it says the following balances, amongst others, appear in the CC's books at the end of the current financial year, 31 July 2019. Okay, so I think, okay, all right, no, it's fine. Okay, yeah, no, it's fine. Okay, members' contributions, a million. Okay, and if we look at these contributions here, you add them up, you see it's a million, so that's consistent. Okay, and then retained earnings. Um, 1st August 2018, that's also fine. We're probably going to use that um, in the second part of the question. With regards to the financial year end, ending 31 July 2019, the following information was available. On 1 February 2019, Paul bought 10% of the CC and, contributions, and contributes 100,000 in cash. According to the um, association agreement, each member is entitled to receive salaries, a salary of 25,000 per month, okay, while a member. All right, on uh, 31 July 2019, the CC recorded a profit of 830,000. The profit after accounting for members' interest like remuneration okay income tax for the year is calculated at 200 and where's the 2019 there you go um income tax for the year is calculated at 232,000. the members are entitled to a distribution of profits 95 thousand each, irrespective of how long they have been a member. 
Okay, all right. So we have all our information there. So part one is just um, pretty much based on that first additional piece of information. Fort Brown bought 10% of the CC and contributes 100,000. So let's deal with part one of this question. Okay, so we have Fort joins. Okay, so since he's getting 10%, we're saying 10% of each of these amounts. So, okay, we can already just calculate this mentally. Let's not waste time. All right, with uh, actually, you know, um, writing all of this out. So times zero point into this. Okay, so that's obviously six percent. And you do the same thing with the other partners. Okay, so obviously here, what we then do, I'm just doing the first one so you guys can see. But otherwise, you know, we are pressed for time. So the new member's interest is obviously going to be then 54, sorry, 54%. Okay. Can you guys see here? Let me zoom in just a bit. Okay. Sorry. Okay. And then we do the same thing. So here it's obviously going to be 3%. See there, I'm putting it in brackets just to let my marker know that I know that this is what the individual is losing. And then here, obviously, what 10% of 10% is 1%. Right? Cool. So this leaves us then with 9%. Okay. And then we know you add up these, you get 10%. And that is what now. Paul Brown has. Here you can even just put a dash or a zero to show that at this stage he had nothing. No interest, no ownership in the CC. All right. And then here you can put 100%. Okay. Here you're also going to have 10% for Mr. Paul Brown. Okay, so we've dealt with that. Okay. But now the other element of it is we know that retained earnings also needs to be shared amongst the partners, right? We also know that retained earnings needs to be shared amongst the partners. So for starters, what did they say in the question? How much, how much retained earnings is available at the beginning? 140,000, one August. And this person joined one February, 2019. Okay, cool. So then we say, okay, how then are we going to split these retained earnings? Obviously we have to say, okay, uh, when it comes to Paul Peary, he owned 60% of the business at the time. Okay? Because obviously, again, here we're saying before, let me push this up, before, um this guy joined the business we want to know how much retained earnings does each partner have so what is 60 percent okay again we don't have time to do the calculations remember we're saying 140. Okay, let let me take advantage Eighty-four thousand. Zero, comma seven. okay so tony is telling us the truth Okay, I'm just going to copy this here. Maybe that can save us some time. Okay, and then here I'm changing the percentage. What was the second partner? It was 30%, I believe. And then the last partner was 10%. Okay. All right. And then at this point, obviously, this guy has nothing in the business. Okay. Is it making sense now how you structure these questions? And I'm sure if you've been looking at the past papers, you'll see they always bring this. It always comes. And remember what I told you guys. Okay, so here actually you want to write it out in full. Okay, so here you are just supposed to write your workings. This was actually supposed to sit in here. Let me see. 
see that? Just, I'm just showing you, it's not significantly important, but you'll see now why they want it like that. Okay. It's a lot neater. And here again, we've got a dash. Can you see, if you add up that row, you get the 140, thousand okay now here total funds before okay so here total funds here again they're testing do you guys know your work when we say total funds we're talking about contribution and catering so you're going to say that six hundred thousand plus the eighty four thousand which will give you six eighty four thousand okay you come here you should get three forty two thousand go to the next one you should get 114,000, okay? Then you come here, obviously that will give you a total funds or it should be a million, 140,000. Okay, now we know the situation before this guy joined. Okay, so here, again, they're testing. Do you know that contribution doesn't change when there has been a, someone joining the CC? So contribution is gonna be exactly the same. So you're still gonna have 600,000 okay, 300,000 over here. Here, what is it? 100,000, okay, and Paul Brown again, uh, he had 100,000 in the business. That's what he contributed. So now our total contributions is 1,100,000. Okay, then we come here. We say, okay, but retained earnings has changed. Now we're saying, uh, we're saying that 10% of this 84,000 must go to, must go towards uh, Mr. Paul, Paul Brown. Okay, so. Let's do this quickly, 84,000, 84,000 times gives us what? Thank you very much, Tony. And then here, 42,000 times 10%, 0, 0,10 gives us what? 4.2. Then 114, sorry, not 100. 14,000 times 0, 0,10 gives us 1,400, okay? All of this, you can put in brackets, because what's happening? This is going to who? I'm, I'm, I'm hearing you say something, but I'm not hearing what you're saying. It's going to the new partner, okay? Going to the new partner. Okay, right. So I'll let you guys add that up. In the meantime, I'll be calculating the new totals. Okay, so 84,000 minus 8.4. And you guys can do this on the side if you want. Equals what? Sorry, this equals shouldn't be there at the beginning. Okay. Um, or another way you could skin the cat, as you could say, times 90%. Zero comma. Okay. I hope someone is calculating for me there the total retained earnings that Mr. Paul is going to now receive. Yes. No, we're doing 2019. The exam. On this question 6.1. Mm -hmm. And here I can already tell you retained earnings is not going to change. It's still 140,000. Okay, the only thing that has changed is the fact that now Paul Brown has a portion of the pie. Can you see that? So, what is my total now? Again, I'm saying 88.4 thousand plus 4.2 thousand plus. 
plus 1,400. What do I have there? Okay, I actually made a bit of a boo boo here. I should be saying plus plus 600 over here, plus 600,000. This is about change in funds. So we're looking at total funds, eh? Okay, let me put this in brackets now. Run it to plus 300. Hmm. So here's where you should have the 140. How much do we have here for four retained earnings? 14,000. Oh, that makes perfect sense because it's 10% of 140. Isn't it? So then this is going to be 1, 2, 40. If I'm not mistaken. And then here it's 114,000. And we're done with question one. And how much marks was there? 28 marks, guys, for that. Hmm? should be looking at it and saying these are mine thank you how much is that 30 out of 180 or eight okay okay so this one i also just um, um also did for the most part actually i need to add another zero there okay so this is part b né? Just add another zero there. Give us another zero here. Okay, I'll explain it just now. Okay, the approach with which we're taking our revision is as follows, isn't it? Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm for the most part trying to do these answers because the whole idea is I want us to be able to interpret the question. After interpreting the question, see how we should approach it. Okay. These are obviously not, it's not 100% it's not guaranteed that these are the right answers, but if you check in your textbook, have a look in there, you'll see they should be, okay, the correct answer. So I can tell you now, you should get at least 90% of the marks in my mind, being conservative, okay? All right. So let's go back to the question and see. I, we know that we, they wanted us to do the appropriation account, okay? Remember, what is the appropriation account? Whether it's in a CC or whether it's in a partnership, it's a temporary final account, and we use it to distribute the profits between the members or the partners in a business. Okay? So uh, here they've given us information, some additional information. Okay, we used most of this information. That's fine. Okay, retained earnings, they told us. Okay, so we know that the financial year we're looking at is 31 July. Okay? And they gave us this retained earning on 1 August. That obviously means that it's our retained earnings that we had at the beginning of the year. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, and then we then say to ourselves, okay, cool. Uh, according to uh, the association agreement, each member is entitled to receive salaries of 25000 per month while they're member. Okay. Right, right, right. And we know that this guy joined in February. What's his name? Paul. Paul Brown. So what was it? 1 February. One February. So February, March, April, May, June, July. Yes, it ends on July. So that's six months. Okay, so we've registered that. We can quickly calculate that if we wanted to. All right, I think I just didn't calculate um, polls. Okay, so each of them. But these are six months, eh? Six. Not just going on. Oh, I see what's happening here. It's 
because I have a lot of things in one line. But we know this is going to be half 300,000, so that's obviously 150,000. Okay, right. That's fine. So, actually, ooh, my bad. I actually think that they made a mistake with this question. I think this is why I had it as 2.5. I think they uh, said 25,000, but they meant to say, uh, they meant to say 2.5. I think that was a genuine mistake. But when you guys get to the exam, do exactly as, as you have it on the paper. Okay? To the, to the 25. It's, 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 going to, it's going to give us, I'll, I'll show you when we get to the end why I'm adjusting it anyway. But I'll also explain what it should look like if indeed it's supposed to be 25,000. So yeah, you guys just follow your paper. But for my purposes, I want to just, you know, do it this way. Yes, sir. <clears throat> do it as it is. Because when we look back and we see, you know, there was a blunder in the paper, we will award marks accordingly. So if someone, no, don't adjust. No. That's not your job. No, You'd lose marks. You will lose. Well, you you may, but the thing about it is, this is why I'm saying don't adjust on your side, because you may think there's something wrong with the question, but there's nothing wrong with the question. Therefore, you lose marks by trying to adjust as you think the question should be. Do you get what I'm saying? And on the other hand, if you do it as per the information given, it'll be a thing of okay, this student worked off of what they were given, so we can't fault them. Does that make sense? All right. But if the question is correct and you decide, no, ah, there's something wrong with the question, you do your own thing and it is right, you lose marks. Makes sense. Okay. All right. But again, I'll show you why I'm, why, why, why I'm doing that just now. Okay. So we've dealt with the salaries bit. Okay. And then obviously you come here, salaries. In fact, let's just finish off information before we go any further. Okay. So we've got that down. 30, on 31 July 2019, the CC reported profits of 830,000. The profit is after accounting for members' interest, like remuneration. Okay? Interest like remuneration. Okay. The income tax for the year is calculated as 232,000. Okay, the members are entitled to a distribution of profit of 95,000 each, irrespective of how long they've been in, been a member. Okay, so life easy. We know we have four members. Okay, so four times 95, 95,000 gives us, oops, 380. So that's how much we are distributing to members. Okay. So. Guys, right now I have the information right in front of me. So we're actually done. Okay? But I need to explain what we have done. Like I said, appropriation account is for distributing profit. So your first thing that you want to look for is did you make a profit or a loss? So you plug in profit and loss, and in this case, it's a profit. Because, um, well, they told us that we had a profit. Okay? But sometimes they'll give you the trial balance. And if this amount is on the credit side, you made a profit. If it's on the debit side, you made a loss. Okay, and I'm just throwing in brackets there, net profit. You don't need to do that, but you could do that, right? Then, they told us about retained earnings on 1 August 2018, all right? Which we knew is that now our opening uh, retained earnings. It was 140,000. We played around with that a little bit in the previous question. So you've entered these two, all right? Happiness, okay? Uh, then, Another thing just worth noting, they said this 830 was after interest um, was received by the partner. So in other words, after all the adjustments have been done, you know, we have that, those calculations that we do, interest on capital, interest on revenue, all that stuff. Okay, so they're telling us after that. Okay, just on the side, so you know what that means. Then salaries, okay, if you calculate it on 2,500, right, per month, you would end up with 105,000. Okay, income tax, they told us, so this is money leaving the business, can you see, on the debit side. Okay, income tax, 232,000. Distribution to members, 
uh, we calculated 95,000 times the four members that we had, and that's exactly what we got here in D. All right. Then finally, retained earnings, closing balance. Now, did they give us this in the question? Did they tell us how much it was? It's the balancing figure, 100 percent. Because here's the thing: if you have, because remember, this is a temporary account. I just want to verify. I believe you, Tony, but I just want to verify that they didn't give us this thing. Okay, yeah, that they didn't give it to us. Okay. Remember, this is a temporary account. So what we have on the debit side must equal what we have on the credit side because we're going to close this account. It's no longer going to exist as soon as we finished off here. Okay. So whatever remains will then go to retained earnings. Okay. So as Tony was saying, it's the balancing figure. Does that make sense? Everybody understand. Okay. So you, like I said before, in a CC or in a partnership, the, re, the appropriation account functions the same. Okay. So you guys should be comfortable with that. So that was question. Question, 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 question. Six. Now, yes. If you work with the 25,000, here we're going to have, uh, we're going to add another zero here, which would basically give us how much? Something like that, right? But now you see, we would have actually come to a loss. Because what that means is we definitely are, are, are going to have more money going out than actually exists in the business. Does that make sense? So now what we're saying is, in order to fund salaries to partners, people who own the business, or members in this case, because we're dealing with a CC, we are now functioning at a loss. And that loss is going to come out of whose pocket? The members, the partners. Does that make sense? So that's why I was saying, I honestly believe that they made a mistake. Because how? Unless they're really looking to destroy the company, but it still doesn't make sense. You, you're, you're, you're taking money out of your own pocket to pay you. You get what I'm saying? So that's why I said, no, I think they just put an extra zero. Okay. But again, it would function the same here, and you probably wouldn't have any problem. I don't know. Loss. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yes, actually, it would be on the other side. So that really doesn't make any sense to me. Now, hopefully that uh, you know ties in why I did it in that particular way. So now we can go to question five. Okay, I'm gonna have a break at um, at nine o'clock. Hopefully we can finish question five. No, we're not doing. All this. I'm just doing 2019 with you. I'm gonna do 2017 with the next class. Then, which is from 10 until 12. Yeah, so then everything will find a way. The way you know everything shall be. <laughs> All right, cool. So question five, let's see what's going on in question five. Question five. I must use this screen so that my online students can see what's going on and see where we're at. So let's just jump to the required quickly. It says complete the table in your answer booklet and calculate the necessary year and appropriations of the partnership. Okay. Prepare the current account of McDonald in the general ledger of Mama traders for the year ended 31 July 2019. Balance the account. Guys, this is free marks. This is free marks. We did the current account before, right? We've done calculations on interest and so forth, so forth. That's all they're asking us to do here. It says the following information relates to the partnership of uh, Marcel McDonald and Mo uh, Marto, who run a retail business, Mama Traders, in Durban. The following balances, amongst others, appear in the business books at the end of the current financial year, 31 July 2019. Okay, so you've got your net profit for the year. Okay, no problem. We've got our capital, all right, for McDonald. We've got our current account for McDonald. Drawings account, okay, all right. And we've got the same for Marto. Okay, and there they are showing. 
they're not giving us an trial balance, but they're saying debit and they're saying credit. Okay, we must be able to interpret whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Then first thing here, they say interest on capital is calculated at 10% per annum. Okay, so let's look at McDonald's uh, capital. 500,000, can you see they didn't say debit or credit? So we can assume it's a positive balance. We can assume it's therefore a credit balance. Does that make sense? For capital. We look at uh, Marto, same thing, 400,000. Okay, cool. So let's go. 10% of 500,000, obviously going to give you 50,000. 10% of 400,000 is going to give you 40,000. Can you see that? Okay. So here, we're obviously rewarding the partners because they had positive capital balances, okay, or favorable capital balances. Then we go to the next line, the next uh, piece of information it says interest on current account is calculated at 5% per annum. Interest on current account. However, if the current account has a debit balance, in other words, it's negative. Because remember, we're dealing with equity accounts. And with equity accounts, we want credit balances. Those are favorable, right? Debit balances, unfavorable. OK? So if we have an unfavorable balance, in other words, we're going to charge Sorry, uh, the interest, uh, interest charge will be 8%. Can you see we're really punishing you? OK? You get less, of, less on the reward than you get on the penalty. Okay. And the reason why it's like that, remember when I took you through my slides, it was because we don't want you to say, ah, it makes no difference. I'll just take out uh, money or, or misuse my current account. And I know I'm only getting penalized at 5%. And then I'll just reinvest it because it's also going to get 5%. So there you're nullifying the, pen, uh, the, the penalty. But if we make it you, you lose more on the penalty, then you'll be like, hey, might as well just keep the money in the business. Okay, All right, anyway, just on the side. Okay, so with McDonald's, let's see here, McDonald's current account, there you can see it's a debit balance. Okay, so yeah, there, 8%. In fact, here, if they really wanted to test you guys, they shouldn't have said, if you have a debit balance, it's uh, at eight percent. They should have said if it's an unfavorable, because then you must be able to depict what is an unfavorable balance on my current account. Okay, all right. Anyway, there you can see I put it in brackets because here we're penalizing. Okay, here they ask us to do the calculation. All right. If it was in the actual current account, we would debit this amount. Okay, all right. And then here five percent because Merto had a positive balance of a hundred and. In other words, a credit balance of 195,000, and there you got your 9.550. Okay, salaries to partners. Let's see what they said there. Third one, each member is entitled to 30,000 monthly. So uh, I don't believe they didn't tell us that uh, one of the, any of the partners was only there for six months or whatever. So we assume they've both been here for the whole year. So 12 times the 30,000, 12 times. 30,000 and you got your 360. Okay. They also told us that uh, in the next bullet point, McDonald's is entitled to a bonus of 15,000. Okay. So we've thrown in that bonus. Okay. And obviously, Moto didn't get anything, so there's nothing there. Then it tells us the partner's share remaining profits and losses in the ratio of three is to two. No interest is charged on drawings. No interest is charged on drawings. Guys. Is there anything brand new here that we haven't done yet? No. Okay. Anyway. So, again, now at this stage of the game, we want to share the profits. I see your hand up here with you now. So, what do we have to do? We need our profits before, before any of these adjustments took place. So, we take this 100 and, sorry, 750,000. Okay. There we go. Yes, sir, you had a question. Possibly. It looks like that. But he would have had even more money if he had a proper balance. Uh, oh, let me not say proper, but a favorable balance. No, but bonus, that would be according to the agreement that we've set in the CC. Why is he getting a bonus and Marto is not? 
maybe use a bigger partner. Does that make sense? All right. If you even look in terms of their capital, who, who put in more? McDonald's. So you see, that's not necessarily in relation to uh, your balance on the capital account. Just what, uh, what is the nature of the relationship between you and the business as a partner? Okay. So let's get into this. So 700, let me actually do this properly. Well, not properly, but just so it calculates for us. So 700,000. Okay, now we're saying minus the payout that we've given these guys for rewarding them. What? Why don't we just? 10,800 and subtract the rest. You can't do that. You can't very well do that. Okay, so we can, yeah, we can do it that way. It's not a problem. Uh, so we add, we're adding, why are we adding? Wait. Why are we adding there? I'm asking everyone. Everyone can ask. Huh? Okay. Remember, we're calculating the remaining profit that must be shared between the partners. Okay? So why are we adding this 10,800? He wasn't rewarded. When we penalize a partner, it's money coming into the business. When we reward a partner, it's money leaving the business, okay? All right, I'm just saying exactly what uh, the lady said, Jahaz in my, in a different set of words, okay? All right, super. So here, like was suggested, now we can just subtract. So 50,000, we can say plus 360,000, which will give you 410,000, plus 15,000, so you got how much? 425,000. So we're minusing 425. We're just dealing with McDonald's right now. Okay, we move on to Myrtle. We gave him 40,000. We gave him another 9.7. So that's 50. So 49, 49, 750, then plus uh, 360. So we can just say 40 plus 360, that gives you 400, plus the 4.9. So then we say minus here. Because that's all money leaving the business. So minus 409750. Am I right? Okay. So it should give you 100 and 100,950. Okay. And then we, they said in the ratios, three is to two, if I'm not mistaken. So that obviously means three over five. Okay. Times one. Oh, oh. 950. Okay, all right. Then I'm just going to copy this here. So that's obviously McDonald's. McDonald's profit that he's going to enjoy. And then two over five for the next partner. Right. So again, this is money leaving us. Okay. There you go. Loss for? With us. No, we made a profit. Oh, so it's a, oh, yes. No, I see what you're saying. I see the negative. I didn't notice the negative there. Thank you, Tony. So these are negatives. These are negatives. So we need to put them in brackets. Thank you for that. Okay. Well, if you look here, let me scroll down. Okay, so if you look here, you see. When we do all of these, we ended up with a lot of yeah. And again, can you see, what is the thing that has made us make a lot of I believe it's the salaries. So again, I honestly believe they just put an extra zero. It doesn't make sense. Why would you? You must reward partners based on how well you are doing in a business. Does that make sense? I'm just now talking out of accounting. I'm talking general business. Why would we give them massive salaries? We're creating losses for 
doesn't make sense. But anyway, we'll leave it as is. Because anyway, either either way, the calculations are still the same. Okay. All right. Anyway, so that is okay. So now here they want us to do the current account for uh, McDonald's. And it's a very simple, simple thing here. All you need to do here is now you go back and you say, okay, what was the calculations for McDonald's? But before we do that, we know before we open a general ledger account, we need to put in the opening balance. Okay? And his opening balance was what? On the debit side. Okay, so balance. Okay. Okay, you're gonna put B slash B. Okay. And you said 135. Then we now can begin. We then say what was the first thing we calculated? Additional information, interest on capital. Were we rewarding or penalizing? We were rewarding. So we're going to credit it. Interest on capital. Okay. And we know all adjustments happen with in the DJ. So if you understand the counting folio will never give you headaches because you just need to say where is this thing coming from that's all you need to say where is this thing coming from? okay and then we know that we gave him fifty thousand. okay then the next one was what next one was interest on current account. there we know we're penalizing him so what are we doing we're putting that on the debit side. interest on i'm just gonna put ca okay Again, GJ, yes. 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 Hmm. Awesome stuff. Yebo. Yebo. Salaries to partners, 360. Okay. That's a reward, so that's always going to be on the. Okay. okay. The other one, bonus. Okay, and that was fifteen thousand. Okay, what else? And then the, the loss, which side is that going to be, debit or credit? It's going to be on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the debit side. And what are we going to call it? We're going to go appropriation. So, creation. Okay, and here in brackets, if you want it, you can say loss. Okay, and that was how much, how much, 60,000, how much? 750. I don't put brackets over here, guys. I'm now in the general ledger. By virtue of debiting and crediting, I'm saying something is negative or positive, favorable or unfavorable. Does that make sense? Okay, when I see that, I say, oh, I've got a student who doesn't know this. And then already I'm looking through the rest of your paper with a fine code. Okay. Does that make sense? Because we reward people who know their story, and unfortunately, we have to penalize people who don't know their story. Does that make sense? But I never carry a grudge. I know students sometimes when they fail or when they get 79 instead of 80, they think, ah, it's personal. 69 instead of, it's not. Whatever is on your paper is what I mark. Because all I see is a student number. So even if I was that type of person, but it takes a lot of energy to say, hey, I'm going to look for Nero's paper. I'm going to look for it and then mark her ash. All right, but anyway, I'm getting sidetracked here. Right, then, is there anything else we needed to do? In fact, we should have done this before I actually did this. Let me push this one down. Is there anything else we needed to do here? Got something. I'm hinting that there is something. Okay. 
the balancing, yes, we're going to need to balance. There's an entry we were supposed to put in here. Yes. Yes, it's drawing. Under a partnership, where do drawings get closed off to? The current account. Okay? So is that going to be a debit or a credit? It's going to be a debit, 100%. Okay? Remember, drawings does not get closed off to the capital account in a partnership. And what is the drawings that they gave us here? This is what they were testing you guys. This is what they were testing you guys on. How much? Two, two thirty thousand. Four zero thousand. That's it. That's a serious boy. Two hundred and forty. Sure. Okay. Yeah, the numbers in this uh, question are a little weird. To me, at least. That's a possibility. Eh? You know, you're teaching me something. Right? You see, that's true. Very well be the case. Yeah. Well, I guess in that case, we can't call them mistakes, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we always throw those in. Tricks, just to see. Who are my... Who really knows their story? Okay. But guys, at this point, we've done everything. Now your job is just to balance it, okay? I'm not going to bother with that because, uh, as you know, we're pushed, we're pressed for time, okay? But that's your question, fine. You guys can balance it, man. If you can't balance, ah, I should be seeing you next year for 1A, not for 1P, but for 1A, okay? All right, guys, so we have two options here. Um, we can take a break or we can just push and hopefully finish the paper. Up to you guys. Up to you guys. You want to take a five minute break at least, maybe? Or do you want to just push? Okay. Do we have consensus? <laughs> yeah. Everyone was late. What are you saying? There was nobody who was on time. Okay. All right. So let's, let's carry on. Okay. But if you guys get exhausted, then uh, we'll call it. Okay. So now we go to question four. Question four, guys, honestly, I honestly believe you guys should nail a question four. Because the adjustments, I think we've dealt quite significantly with them. We spent a lot of time on unit three and unit four. But now the whole point, the whole thing about this is you need to understand the different statements. This is where they catch you. I don't think they catch you out on the adjustments themselves. I think we all have gone through a lot of adjustments. It's in the different statements. So here you can see um, they only require two things from us, right? Let me see. Yeah, it's just these two things. So number one, they say prepare the statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income. All right, at 31 July 2019. Then the second thing they ask, they say prepare the following notes to the financial statements. Yay! Number of my students who don't know notes. Have all. And here you can see they like inventory. They like these two, these two guys. Make sure you know them, please. Trade in other receivable and trade in other payables. Please make sure you know. Also, uh, make sure you know net net debtors. How to calculate that? Too. Okay. Okay. Right. So make sure on your notes. Okay. Right. Anyway, so let's get into the question. We now know what they want from us. Uh, what have they given us? The following information was taken from the books of Glassware Traders, a sole trader owned and run by Light uh, Glamini at the end of the financial year. Pre-adjustment trial balance of Glassware Traders as at 31 July 2019. Okay, so there's all the information, statement of financial position, that's fine, all right. That's obviously your assets, liabilities, and then finally, your owner's equity accounts. That would fall under there. We go to the nominal account section. We have sales, okay? All income and expenses, basically, okay? All right, anyway, we know these things. All right, then we go to, it says ignore that, okay? Beautiful, all right? Less work that we need to do. Then it says debtors owing 2,500 must be written off as e recoverable. okay? So, 
Yeah, maybe let's do it like that. So I've already done this because obviously I know I know that for a fact we will never get through a whole paper by actually answering it together in two hours. Maybe if we had three, maybe. Okay. So again, the whole focus is interpreting. Okay, so here credit losses. If if we're saying we have to write off 2.5, all right, from debt is it means that our credit losses have increased. That makes sense. Let me zoom in a bit here because I see it's a bit fuzzy on the projector. Okay. Right. So whatever credit losses we had previously, we now need to add 2.5, and that's exactly what we've done. But now it's not only credit losses that's affected. Also, our debtors control or our debtors needs to decrease. But fortunately, guess what? We are in. We are in the income statement or the statement of profit and loss. Does that make sense? So we don't have debtors in there. But when we go to our notes. In trade and other receivables. Okay, so here we need to adjust for that. Our debtors is going down. Remember, we're writing off 2.5. Does that make sense? Okay, super. So we have adjusted accordingly for that first additional piece of information. Let's now go to the next. Allowance for credit losses must be created. Oh, these guys are so kind to, to tell you to create it. Sometimes I'll just say it uh, allows for credit losses should be adjusted to 3.1. But it was never in existence prior. How do you know that it was never in existence prior? There's no allowance for credit losses in this statement. Okay, so here, like this scenario, there is no, and we know we find this way in the statement of financial position or in the balance sheet section. Does that make sense? So they could have very well said adjust it to 3.1, but it's not here. So that means you need to create it. I'm just making sure you understand. If they don't use the word create, they say adjust, you still are creating it if it's not there. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Debtors allowance. We don't have debtors allowance. No, we don't. We don't have that. We don't have that in your textbook. I don't know if it's in other accounting or if they're referring to the same thing, just using different terminology. Okay. You can Google it and we can talk about it after, but I don't want to get deterred eh? because we don't have much time. So allowance for credit losses. This is going to obviously reduce your debtors. Remember, we, we use allowance for credit losses to give us a realistic perspective on how much we anticipate we should receive. And this is how you calculate your net trade debtors. Can you see that? All right. So if they say calculate your net trade debtors, this is your calculation. Okay. Right. All right, but then let's scroll up. We also need to include this in the income statement because remember we've got allowance for credit losses and we have allowance for credit losses adjustment. Okay, so here allowance for credit losses adjustment is 2.1. It's an expense. Okay, that's why we put it under. If you look here, you'll see less distribution in administrative and other expenses. Okay, but we also know it can be an income when we are adjusting downwards. So for instance, if we had our allowance for credit losses previously was set at 3.5, and now we're adjusting downwards to 3.1, it would then become an income. Do you see that? Okay, All right. Anyway, I'm sure you guys have enough questions to go and see that nicely, uh, what I'm saying, and I'm sure in previous videos, you, you also have that there. So let's go to the third one now. The third one says an amount of 4,500 4, for an insurance premium has already been paid for August. Remember, we're doing this for July to July, 31 July. So if we pay for August, it means we pay prepaid expense. Yes, 100%. Okay. So then we say to ourselves, Okay, they've given us the amount. Oh, thank goodness. 4,500. Is this going to affect the income statement? Prepaid expense. What, what type of account? It's an accrual. Okay, so that's a current asset. But it is, you are right. It is going to affect the income statement. It's just going to affect your insurance. We're going to decrease our insurance. Let me scroll up. Can you see that? 
because in our books is 4.5, but we know that four, I'm sorry, 45,000, but we know 4.5 needs to be removed because that's for the following financial year. Okay, right. So then you're gonna come here and look at that. We have prepaid expense under trade and other receivables because it's our current asset. Make sense? Okay, so that's how we deal with that fourth adjustment there. Oh, sorry, third. Oh, we're only on the third one, guys. Yes. Which answer? Yes, it's an accrual. But remember, with every accrual, we can have a uh, current asset or a current liability. Does that make sense? So we also need to contextualize, yes, it's an accrual, but is it a current asset or is it a current liability? All right, and then adjust accordingly. All right, glassware traders has rented out a storeroom since 1 August 2018, all right, so at the beginning of the financial year, and receives a rental of 2000 per month. Okay, the fact that they're telling us that means that we need to check. Have we received all the money we should have received or have we received more? So we say 2000 times 12, because we know the financial year is 12 months or any financial year should be 12 months, okay? So according to let's let's look here according to what's our rent income under the nominal account section rent income twenty six thousand. is that correct what's two thousand times twelve twenty four thousand okay so we have more rent income than we should have so that needs to be adjusted so here you can see twenty six thousand minus two thousand we get twenty four thousand now under the, I don't know if I did it, but under here, yes, income received in advance. Oh, so I did do it. This is the rent income. Again, this is an accrual, but now it's accrued to someone else. So it's a kind of liability. Okay. Here, I put creditors control. I should have said trade and other receivables. I don't know. I don't know why I did that. Is it? Well, yes, actually, sorry. So I just needed to actually add that here. Yes. Payables, ne? All right, awesome stuff. Okay, so that's been recorded. So we can then move on to the next one. Let's do that. One. So that was number four. Number five, they say interest on loan is calculated at 12% per annum. The loan was negotiated and received on 30 September 2018. No capital and interest payment payments have been made to date. No capital and interest payments have been made. A capital repayment of 50,000 is due 1 October 2019. When does our financial year end? The, August, yes, we can say of August, but uh, or we can say 31 July 2019. So that 50,000 is outside, so we don't care for it it's outside of our financial period. So let's look at the beginning of the information. The loan was negotiated and received. Interest is calculated 12 percent per annum. No capital and interest payments have been made yet. Okay, so what they're telling us there is basically. We're, Huh? Yes, the amount hasn't changed, but then there's also interest due because we haven't paid anything. Yes, 12%, 100%. 12%? 12%? Yes. Yes, we do. From 30 September, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So we then say, okay, what is the interest? What, what is the loan amount? Let's see something here. I just want to see. Interest on loan, the loan is okay. Yeah, that's fine. So, where's our loan? We have loan there at ABB 200,000. Okay, 200,000 times 12%. Like you said, we have to count the months because we said 30 September is when it was agreed, right? So, we're gonna say what? We're gonna okay, let's check October, November, December, January, February, March. April, May, June, July. So you see it's 10 months. 
because remember we said 30 September, so we are beginning in October. Okay, so uh, where can I do this calculation? <clears throat> so 10 divided by 12. In fact, let me start with the amount 200,000 okay, times the interest of 0. Comma. Okay, and then times 10 over 4. And that gives you 20,000. Is the calculation making sense? Yeah. Okay. Right. So we've got our 20,000 there. And then we say interest, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's for current. Yes. So here we've got a crude expense. Okay, we owe this, and we've added in the twenty thousand over there. Okay, we'll see where this five thousand is coming from later on, but uh, you can see we've included that there. Okay, and then obviously interest expense. Uh, where is it now? Interest expense we put it under profit before financial costs. Okay, twenty thousand. And I'm only doing this profit before financial costs because I see if you look at your income statement. They also have profit before financial cost, which is basically just interest. Okay. Right. Let's go back to our question. So, yes, sir. So, uh, profit before financial cost, which is basically your profit after your operating expenses. Because this is usually, this is just for interest expenses. So if we had interest on mortgage, interest uh, expenses, or all your interest stuff will basically have to come. Can you see these are all your regular expenses? Okay. Now, not every income or profit and loss statement has this profit before, finance, uh, before financial profit. Okay. Yeah, let me say it like this. So where, um, when you borrow money, or if you lend money to someone, or you borrow money, what do we always charge? Why do we charge? So it's a reward for providing finances to someone, all right, or a firm. Does that make sense? So the cost of borrowing money is interest. So that's why we say, financial costs. In other words, profit before interest. Does that make sense? Because financial cost is what? Is interest. Does that make sense? So I know, yeah, man, these are financial terms. If you go to biology, we'll talk to you about the bladder, liver, organs, all that kind of stuff. This is accounting speak. But if we want to make it very simple, by saying profit before interest, costs, because here we're talking about the interest that we are paying. Where do we look at the interest we are receiving? Under additional other income, all right? If we had maybe an interest on fixed deposit, it would come here. Does that make sense? We wouldn't put it under financial cost, because that's another cost to us. That's actually interest we're receiving. Yeah. It's an other, an other income. What do you mean? Here. Yeah. Well, no, well, this line item, remember here we will calculate whatever profit we have, assuming we have a profit again, because that could be a loss before the financial cost. So as far as a gross profit, whatever it is, uh, yes, it's a total. This is a total. Because remember, our profit or loss is right here at the bottom. I'm just going to put XXX. Here. Can you see that? That's now whether we made a, like our final net profit. Let me even say net profit or net loss. Just like how we do over here, gross profit is a total. This is going to be a total. Gross income is going to be a total. Can you see that? Okay, if I'm discussing this with you guys, 
I'm wasting a lot of time. Okay, so I'm going to get to the question. But these are things you guys must be actually assessing for yourselves as you look through the statement. Because remember, I told you guys we won't have time, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. All right. But anyway, thank goodness we have some time to revise. Okay. According to a physical stock take, guys, this thing is always going to come like, in one way, shape, or form. Okay. The following was on hand on 31 July 2019. Yes. Uh huh. Yes. Perpetual. This one was a perpetual. Yes, we still would check. If we look here, we have cost of sales. Let's look. Let's look in the question. Do we have cost of sales? And we have trading inventory. Uh -huh. um, you actually won't be able to do it because in the periodic you have to calculate your cost of sale, isn't it? So if you do it as a periodic, if you do it as a perpetual, you won't be able to calculate your cost of sales. So you actually won't be able to do it. No. You will get method marks. You will obviously get marks for revenue, return, uh, sales. Sorry, say, uh, sales, sales returns. Um, if there's any other income, if there's also expenses, which you definitely are going to have. All right. So you will get method marks. But remember, guys, that's easy. All you need to remember is what is my calculation for cost of sales, and that's what we did in Unit Six. Remember, I gave you even the ice task, and you start with the opening balance on your inventory. Then you say, okay. What? Yes, then there's purchases, then less purchases returns. Okay? Then you say after that, you're saying, are there any additional costs that I incurred in order to get my inventory ready for sale on the shelf? Okay? Uh, carriage inwards uh, would be an example of that. Import tariffs, another example of that. Okay? Uh, you know, things like that, freight costs and stuff like that. Then you say, what is my closing inventory? Okay? Which is going to be a minus. And then you have your cost of sales. So it's, it's, as long as you know the cost of sales formula, the periodic won't be a problem for you. Okay. And it's good we're actually making mention of this because then now you now know if I have an inventory amount, if I have a cost of sales amount, I'm definitely on the perpetual. Does that make sense? Because that means that for us to have an inventory amount, it means that we have been calculating how much inventory we have consistently. Okay. If we don't have an inventory amount, only place you're going to see how much inventory we have is in this type of this part here, where they said we did a stock take, um, a physical stock take, and trading inventory was so much. That's when you now know, oh, okay, this is how much trading inventory we have. And also, there'll probably be another statement somewhere, somewhere saying your opening uh, trading inventory for the year was so much. Does that make sense? So you now know I have my opening and I have my closing trading inventory. Right. Awesome stuff. So we have our trading inventory there, 156,000. We then go and we say, what was our trading inventory according to our books, according to what we were recording? How much is it? 160. So we have a discrepancy that we have to adjust for. Which accounts are going to be affected? Nope. Assets, yes. Which assets? Yes, trading inventory is going to be affected. That's the asset that's going to be affected. Then what's the other account that's going to be affected? Where well, we have to account for this discrepancy. Sorry? No, that yeah, that's going to be affected by virtue of trading inventory. Deficit what? No, in your well, you're not wrong. You're 100 percent correct. But the only problem is how Edge does their books and how your memo does it. It is cost of sales. Okay, so all right. So here, cost of sales. The discrepancy we said it's 150. 
56 and we said it was 60 uh, 160,000 according to our books so here cost of sales we say plus 4,000 okay then come down to our inventory and we can you see here we've minus to 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 get the the correct total of inventory so that now is, I think that was additional item number six. Yes, and then stationary, they're saying 14,500. That's how much inventory stationary we have on hand. So this we're gonna subtract from the stationary expense we have in our profit and loss. So this 25,000 needs to decrease by 14. So that's what we've done. Can you see we've minus, then we have 10,500. Then, so that's the total expense that we spent on stationary for the year. Then we know that the other account that's affected is consumable stores on hand. Because we're basically saying this trading inventory, sorry, this stationary that we have, we can actually sell it for some money. So can you now see how it falls under trade and other receivables, or you can say inventory? Okay. Whoa. But please just double check. Sorry, I did this late at night. Just double check. No, it does make sense. A consumable stores on hand should be part of inventory and not part of certain other receivables. Please just double check that in your textbook. It's inventory. Okay. I just want to get right up. Okay. All right. Super. Uh, an amount of 5000 for an advertisement that was published 25 July 2019 has not yet been paid. Okay, So this is an accrued expense. Because remember, our year end is 31 July 2019. So we should have paid this. Okay, So advertising needs to go up. And then we have accrued expense. There's our 5,000. That's where that 5,000 is coming from. And then we go up. And then we know, um, what was it? Advertising. Oh, we didn't actually write this in. On the telephone. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Greg. Okay. Is it uh, 65,000 there in your question? 65, so I need to put a zero here. Okay. All right. So, we're fine over there. And then let's see. Okay, so then last one. Joe Slow, a debtor previously written off as a bad debt paid 500 to honor his debt how do you record this what is it why yeah so it's going under trade and other receivables uh-huh does income go under trade and other receivables? What goes under trade and other receivables? <laughs> Current assets. Ah, yes. Okay, so since it's income, what type of income is it? <laughs> yes, it, it falls under other income, but what is the name of this account? No, it's not a capital contribution. It's Joe, an owner. Bad debts recovered. Okay? It's bad debts recovered. Okay? This is why I tell you guys when it's now exam time, now you can still go through your textbook. End of October, I'm expecting you guys to be going through past papers. Okay? And then go in your textbook to say, oh yeah, there's this thing I need to fine tune. I don't understand it too well. So here, bad debts recovered. You can also call this credit losses recovered. Okay? Same thing, 500. What other accounts is going to be affected? Bank. Bank, we know, falls underway. Is it there? Are you sure? Asset. So it doesn't fall under cash and other cash equivalent. Are you sure? So all we have for bank is 500. In the in the thing, does it does it have the bank account? 
the pre-adjustment charter, uh, 45,000, okay? So this is gonna be 45. Let's double check, yeah? But I know, I know, um, sometimes we don't have cash and other cash equivalent. In fact, most of the time. But if we had cash and cash equivalents, this would fall under that and uh, not under. So cash and cash equivalents is basically, it's all, oh, actually, yes, it's money on hand, petty cash, cash float um, would fall under those. Things. No, bank would. But that's why I'm asking, according to your textbook, what I would. We're looking at the notes, isn't it? The financial notes. So you should see this in unit four somewhere. In trade and other receivables. But yes, you are 100% correct. I don't know if you had any additional questions. Your petty cash, your cash flow, your bank, with all, assuming bank is positive. Because if bank is negative, then it should go under your other payables, trade and other payables. So, yeah. So I'm just going to highlight this in yellow. And then you guys just, just, just verify that. Verify that as you guys advise. Okay. Right. But we'll continue as to just uh, search us on in there. Okay, so that was your first bit. And can you see we pretty much did the, the notes simultaneously? Okay. Uh, did you manage to find anything there? There's no bank in trade and other receivables. Do you have, though, a cash and cash equivalent? So it's fine. So I think for this purposes of this question, then I would not include bank here. That should go under cash and cash equivalents. But at least now you see, if you do have cash and cash equivalents, which most of the time they don't ask you cash and cash equivalents. Usually it's trade and other payables and trade and other receivables. Okay. And then you might uh, include inventories. Um, so what pages are those, Tony, in your textbook? All of those financial statements. One thirty six on to no 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 not the whole unit Tony just the page. One thirty eight to one forty five. So please make sure that you comfortable with those. Guys, it's not a cramming activity. You have to just know structure and understand what belongs with. Right, but that was um, that was your question four, okay? And how many marks there? Can you see now? Why I say ah, uh, this forty-five ah, uh, guys, we've already passed now. We are across fifty percent now. With the question we had, 
let's see, question five, 25 marks, which was easy. They just wanted us to calculate and then they wanted us to do the current account. And then here it was just interest uh, calculation, 28 marks and what? The appropriation account. Ah, we've already passed. Ah, uh, there, there's so much of that here, my friend. So much of that here. So what are we on now? It's a uh, quarter to ten. It's quarter to ten. Okay, so there's a good chance for still. Okay, three points. Question three. I'm just gonna go through it with you guys. Uh, let's see now. Oh, what I wanna look at the question. That's what I'm trying to do. Let me do that here. So here they say entries relating to the sale for cash on 31 January uh, 2019. Narrations are required. Okay. So I was hoping to actually do this with you guys because then we could talk about narrations. And as you saw, I've already done the calculations we're already possible, but we won't have time to do everything if, if we actually do that. But I'll talk to you about narrations. I'll explain them to you. Remember, it's a phrase. If you have more than five words, you're not going too far. You're not giving me a sentence, okay? So I'll go through each of those entries. Remember here, guys, depreciation, guys, it's coming. Whether it's coming in a question four, where you have to do adjustments and then they include depreciation in there, or it's coming as an isolated question on its own. It's coming. This is very important for us. So it's coming in one way, shape, or form, okay? So number one, they want you to record this, the sale. In other words, the disposal, okay? So you need to know those steps. And remember, we have two situations. We have a disposal midway into the year, and we have a disposal that happens either at the beginning of the year or right at the end, okay? Midpoint requires you to start counting amounts and apportioning and so forth. Slightly different, but it's the same process. Then here, I see your hand. I'll be with you now. I just want to read the requirement. Then here it says, state whether the following statements are true or false. I'm going to leave you guys to go and do this, okay? Because this is just reading theory, okay? But if you are, um, I've already gone through those. These are the answers you should get, okay? These are the answers you should get. So just share that on the WhatsApp group, okay? Right. This, 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 okay, all right, so, um, let's do this, and then, okay, so, what's going on over there, so basically now we just need to do 3.1, okay, 3.1, so there in 3.1, Let's go through the question together in case my online people don't have the question paper nearby. It says the following information was taken from the books. All right. A sole trader owned and run by Joy. Uh, all right. At the end of the financial year, 31 July 2019. Okay. Extract from the pre-adjustment trial balance. Can you see here? All they've done is they've only included the assets. Okay. Because they just want you to do uh, this. What's the call? recording the disposal of this this asset so here they tell us bought all the equipment one august 2017 that's the previous financial year because remember we're reading from one august 2018 all the way to 31 july 2019 okay so i think it's it would be good for me to at least draw the timeline so we can all see what's happening so here we've got one, 17, okay? But what we're interested in, oh yes, sorry, you had a question. Yes. Sorry, a cube? What? No, that's just a line item. We're talking about 
the accumulated depreciation on equipment, that's a line item. That's an account. Because we also have accumulated depreciation. We can have accumulated depreciation. In this instance, it's just equipment. But we can also have accumulated depreciation on vehicles. We can also have accumulated depreciation on uh, furniture and fittings. Does that make sense? So that is an actual account. So Um, so we wouldn't say that, but it's basically a summary of the transaction. That's what the narration is. So, for instance, in that instance, okay, let me not use that instance. But can I just say that when we go through narrations, then you'll see what a narration is, rather. Because otherwise I'll explain it here, then explain it again for the second time. Okay. So remember, this is the financial year that we are, the period we're actually interested in. Sorry, I just have 15 minutes, so forgive me. Um, okay, so, uh, zoom out. There we go. Right. so there we go, this is on 31 July, da, 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 da. so this is at the end of the financial period, okay, so, okay, Okay, let me just read through this. We won't, even if I try to explain, I think I'll end up spending too much time. On 31 uh, January 2019, equipment with an original cost of 15,000 was sold. Okay, so we sold over here. This is what, 19. Okay, we sold. And how much did we sell for? Okay, now I think I'll have to just use my physical. We sold for 13,000. 500 okay cash okay that's important because that's going to show how we new equipment was purchased on credit for 25 so we also bought on the 31st for 25,000 and this is all equipment okay oh this is January 31 January my bad so that's somewhere here somewhere somewhere here Okay, so let me do this. And move that here. Okay. Erase this. Go back. Oh, sorry. I want to go back to drawing my friend. There we go. So I'm just going to. Hmm. Okay, now tell that I'm under pressure for time. Okay, what else happened? No entries have been made for the transaction dated transactions dated on 31 January 2019. Then they say depreciation is calculated as follows. On equipment at 20% per annum according to the diminishing balance method. Okay, right. So we need to record the purchase of this new equipment. So there's two depreciation calculations that we need to do. First, on the equipment that was dispersed, okay, which would have been from here to here, we need to get the depreciation on that. Then we need to get the depreciation on the new equipment that was bought on that same day, which was the 25,000. So I'm going to say old, okay, and then I'm going to say new to distinguish, okay? That's the summary of it, all right, in a nutshell, okay? And then we also need to record having bought this new, because remember they said all transactions on the 31st were not recorded, okay? So we didn't even record having bought. Okay, did I actually record having bought it? No entries have been made. Yeah, so I didn't actually record having bought it. Should have also done that. That's actually where one should have started, okay? So obviously, I'm just going to do it here at the end, just so you know, but by now you should know, okay? So obviously here, equipment is going to be debited, okay? And then since they didn't tell us whether it was on cash or credit, we're going to assume it was for uh, cash. In other words, bank, okay, is going to decrease. 
25,000. Okay. Now, it was purchased on credit. Okay, super. So what is then affected? Credit is control. Yes. I heard someone say debt is control. I don't know who it was. I don't know who it was. But I think I heard that somebody say that. Okay. All right. Okay, so here you could, as a narration, can literally just say purchase of equipment, new equipment. In fact, even if you just say equipment, it would be fine. Does that make sense? I'm not going to write it out because obviously we don't have time. Um, then let's go here. So firstly, the asset disposal. Oh, is it? Oh, sorry. We, guys, we've run out of time, unfortunately. So... All right, if you just give me three minutes, I'll be done. Now. <laughs> okay, so that's narrations. So remember your process, guys. When it comes to a media uh, disposal, first thing that you need to do is you need to find out, okay, what was the depreciation, right? What was the depreciation for the, the asset that we disposed in the middle of the year? Okay, you put that in, all right? Then you need to account for... Um, okay, first step we know also now you need to remove the cost. So this was actually us removing the cost, this one. So in narration, removal of cost of equipment or disposed equipment, okay? But usually removal of cost price is sufficient, okay? Uh, equipment cost price, you can throw that in. But keep it short, guys, okay? Then uh, depreciation, okay, you can literally just say accounting for depreciation. So that's the first step that I was telling you about. We were accounting for depreciation on the old equipment that we disposed of. Okay. Then accumulated depreciation, we're removing that. So we have to take this 1,200 and then add it to only the depreciation on the old. So we also need to calculate all the depreciation that took place only on the old uh, asset that we disposed of. All right. Then bank, remember we sold it for cash. So this 13,000 is affecting bank, and then asset disposal, we know, is always the other account that's affected. Then, obviously, we need to calculate if we make a profit or a loss on the disposal, and then, um, you know, the final step that I did not record at the beginning, which was the purchase of the equipment. Those are all happening in there, okay? And there's like 21, 21 marks on that, okay? And then here, they just wanted you to do the debtors control, all right? Here they, um, in question one, yeah, here was multiple choice, another theory question, okay? You guys can take a picture of that. I haven't yet verified if that one is correct, all right? Um, and then here they wanted you to do a bank record in question one. You guys are under pressure. You need to give the other lecture a chance. Okay, then here you need to do uh, what the bank record, okay? So there you have it. That 7,000 is actually an outstanding check. I just wanted to check if there's a check number for that 7,000. Okay, and then here, obviously, you needed to do the bank. I wanted us to do this together. Okay. Here, they made you, you have to work your way backwards because they don't give you the opening balance on the bank account. So basically, you need to use your bank statement to calculate all the corrections that need to happen in the bank account to see what bank balance should you get. Because remember here, at the end of your bank recon statement, you got the balance as per bank account. Okay, but bank recon, guys, we get so many questions. I really think this shouldn't be an issue. Okay. And then obviously you need to do your cash receipts and your cash payments and see, okay, what amounts, what what then should be my final uh, total for my cash receipts and my cash payments? Okay. But that's just hey, what account is this? What what which one affected by this transaction? So that should be straightforward and simple. Guys, that is your 2019. 2019 suggested answers. We are going to stop there.